Hello, sorry about that. Hello, Mr. Hamilton, how are you? Oh, hello, Mr. Hamilton, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for waiting for me. No worries, no worries. You uh, Just so you know, Laird, we haven't started the podcast, but I do have the record because uh, we record the videos when it starts up. So if okay. you need to pick your nose or anything, don't do it right now. Okay, I won't do it. <laughs> How's your day going? So far, so good. We had a little uh, exercise this morning, and then I got to eat some food, and then which lately hasn't been every day. So, well, that's. Are you fasting? Um, I, I've been putting. I mean, I do. I've been playing with a bunch of different stuff. I do. I do some. You know, some kind of regular uh, eating windows, kind of intermittent fasting stuff. But uh, in the in the past couple of weeks, I've been doing some like more like legitimate fasting, you know, more than 30 hours. Oh yeah. That's good. Cool. Um, well, nice to meet you. I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. And, uh, we're going to hop into the podcast. We'd like to have a fun informal chat, just like we're sitting at lunch on the yeah. beach, you know, talking yeah. biohacking life stories. Okay. Um, feel free to ask me anything throughout the show. If you have any questions, Okay. And um, anything that you want to make sure we highlight throughout the podcast. Okay. I don't have any, I don't have any, um, you know, I don't have any kind of set, set uh, motives or anything. So it's perfect. Anything that you're like uh, gelling with or working on right now that you, you, you would enjoy talking about? Um, I, I mean, I probably, I can't imagine we won't get around it at some point, but okay, more, you know, it's, I got a lot going on between parenting and work and fitness and, you know, okay, all that stuff. Okay, cool. Um, and we write the intro afterwards, so it's a quick three, two, one, welcome to the show. And we'll Perfect. just go from there. Cool. And any other questions? No. Okay. Let me turn on the other recorder here. Okay, test, test. And if you hear any background noise, uh, don't worry about it, Laird. This microphone does a really good job of not picking that up. So, okay. Um, but some from time to time, if a bunch of people are outside the studio, I might hit the mute button while you're talking. No problem. I won't take it personally. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Ready to go? Here we go. In three, two, one. Listeners, welcome to the show today. I am really excited to welcome one of my personal heroes for about 15 years now, ever since I read this quote, and it goes like this. The scariest thing uh, in my life is living a half-lived life, or the thing I fear the most is living a half-lived life. And when I read that quote for the first time, it something struck with me. And uh, I knew that was that was that was me. And I have loved that quote ever since I've heard it. I'm going to ask the guest about uh, that quote along further along in the podcast. But his name is Laird Hamilton. He's one of the greatest waterman and most innovative surfers in history and has achieved unparalleled success without even competing in the prof professional circuit. And a uh, uh, personal hero and, uh, of mine for many, many reasons. But we'll talk about that later. Laird, thank you so much for coming on the show. How are you doing today? I'm, I appreciate it. Thank you for the gracious uh, introduction. Um, I'm doing good. I'm, uh, I'm got, you got me right where you want me. I'm well fed, well worked out, and, and uh, ready to converse. And comfortable at home, right? Are you in That's right. Malibu? Yes, I'm, I'm in Malibu right now. Why do you choose Malibu as a home these days? Uh, well, normally we split the years. So I, I always say, you know, I'm, I, I'm a human and I live on earth. And if you're something different, we can yeah. talk about it. But, uh, you know, we, since Gabby and I have been together, uh, which we're going on 23, 23, 24 years now, uh, you know, we've spent half the year in California. And, and it just, we ended up kind of, kind of arriving in Malibu over time. When I first met Gabby, she was down South, uh, in Marina del Rey and, uh, in Los Angeles. And then I had family from Southern California. So I spent some time down there and then we found ourselves coming up to Malibu and, uh, and we just felt at home up here and we, we, we feel like it's, uh, so close yet so far away, you know, so it's, and it's, it's easy to access 
kind of the world from here. You know, LAX is a stone's throw away and, and, uh, and it's easy to travel. And, and then the rest of the time, you know, we try to be in Hawaii when we're not here. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, um, I was talking to Gabby just a minute ago, and I, I was really inspired by the dynamic that you two have to build a life and build a business together. Um, so I want to talk about that later in the show. But um, I was I was kind of shocked that I asked, I told some of my friends that you were coming on the podcast, and and a few of them didn't know who you were. And I thought to myself, you know, how do you not know who Laird Hamilton is? But um, but you're one of the biggest big wave surfers, I would say, of all time. Yeah. And I've got to ask you this question to see if to know if it's true. Um, I read online that you were actually born in salt a saltwater sphere. So it can help with your well, mother's name. Is that well, true? no, it's it, it it what's interesting is it was called a bathosphere what I was born in. It wasn't in the water. It was actually a uh, a device that they were using at the University of San Francisco that they would put on uh, on the woman, and in this case, on my mother. In the last trimester of pregnancy, she would go into this facility, and they would they would like it was like a reverse. Uh, vacuum uh, like a hair dryer those old hair dryers that you see on the ladies with those big um, but this thing this was a vacuum and they put it on the stomach and it would pull on the stomach and allow the fetus to move more freely um, mm -hmm. inside of the womb uh, and I don't I'm not sure what all was supposed to happen but but something may have happened we're not sure we're not sure but yeah I know but water I think people sometimes they equate bathysphere with a with a water birth which um, I don't know if people realize how kind of water births are pretty uh, intense given everything yeah. that's going on. <laughs> yeah, I could imagine. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> they, I think they have actually a YouTube video of a water birth of a woman. Yeah. Giving it, which is well, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty intense. It's a serious thing. I mean, yeah. I think birth is obviously one of the most intense things that we have going on down here. <laughs> I could imagine. <laughs> um so uh, for the listeners, Laird, because we have a lot of entrepreneurial listeners out there. Yeah. Um, could you give us like uh, in a couple of minutes just just who you are? But I'd like to ask you this way, like from your perspective, how do you see yourself? So maybe a little bit about your background and then how you see yourself as the uh, surfer, innovator, creator, artist, entrepreneur that you are today. Well, that's a difficult question. You know, how do you how does someone see themselves? Uh you know, I, I, um, I start, you know, I grew up in Hawaii and, and was, it was in the ocean, uh, from, a you know, as probably not far after uh, I could walk. And so I, I was raised in, in the ocean and, you know, in, in, in the, in the sports arena, you know, when you look at, at a lot of, a, a lot of top level, you know, people in sports that, that kind of transcend their sports or go to the, go to these high levels of sports. It's, it's usually kind of based on, on that they did it from the beginning and they did it right all day long, every day for their entire life. Right. Uh, and, and that's, and that's true in my case. Uh, I started at a really young age. I was in a really great environment for it. Um, everybody, all the men I looked up to were watermen, which means that you could dive and sail and, 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 and fish and surf and paddle. And you could do all the, you know, that you were really uh, well versed in being, and in my case, being in Hawaii and some of the most rugged oceans in the world, uh, you're well versed at being in those environments. And, and so that's my back, that's how I started. Uh, and then I had a, I think I, I have a good disposition um, to do uh, dangerous things, a little, you know, maybe, you know, they describe it as a daredevil or, you know, people like to say it's, you know, that you don't have fear and all that. I, 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 I don't like that. I usually like to say it. there's a level of, of, it takes a level of intelligence to be able to do things that are dangerous, especially on a regular basis right. um, and, and for your whole life. Um, we hope that that's a reflection of, uh, maybe of your fear ultimately. So, so yeah, I, I, I evolved kind of, um, you know, my dad was a, my dad was a surfer, um, a great surfer in his, in his, uh, era. And, and, uh, I had that as an example and kind of, he was young and, uh, so him and I were pretty competitive, um, even though he was my dad and, 
And so that was, I had that kind of rub as well. Um, and, and, uh, and, and, and so I, but I, you know, because I got to watch him, I got to just kind of make a decision about which direction I wanted to go. Surfing is a very unique sport in that you don't necessarily have to be, uh, or you don't have to participate in the, in the, uh, you know, in the, in the structure of the organized structure of it, you right. can be an artist. It's a little bit like dance or something like that, where you can, you know, or, or you could be, you know, mountain climbing, you know, you could be mountain climbing. I mean, these, some of these individual sports, you can really kind of go off on your own and really kind of forge your own way. Um, yeah. You know, and, and even musicians do that, you know, where they don't have to, they're not stuck in a structure. And so I think I, I decided to do that at a very young age and kind of, uh, and that gave me the freedom to really be more exploratory. I yeah. think I was able to kind of, kind of do things my own way, how I wanted, when I wanted, um, which, you know, wasn't always easy uh, because it's hard to convince people to support you, um, you know, when you're doing things, how you want, when you want. Um, and it's not also in the, in the cons, you know, the constraints of, of the normal organized way of voting about it. So, you know, I, I have a very unorthodox kind of uh, history and approach. And I think that led to uh, that's led to my success. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and also it's, it's allowed me the fortune to be able to kind of be more creative and kind of, uh, and be more and more and ultimately be innovative. Yeah. yeah I, I have, I've been able to be, um, uh, uh, innovative because of it. And I have a, you know, growing up in Hawaii, the way I did, I think also gave me a little bit of a, I had a little bit of a rub, um, you know, it, within going to school and, and, and where we lived, I was a little bit of an outcast. And so that allowed me to, uh, a fortunate kind of attribute that, you know, you, you, you don't spend so much time being concerned about what people think, um, mm -hmm. which can inhibit you a lot of times from being creative and adventurous and going against the flow. And, um, you know, my, I have a friend that has a great saying that he says, uh, well, throw has a, the writer throw has a great saying, you know, disobedience is the, the, the true foundation of, uh, liberty and, and the obedient shall be slaves. So, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, I think, I think I have a, a, a certain disobedience in me, um, and, and, uh, which has, has actually worked to my benefit, um, yeah. given, just given the platform and, and some of those unique things that I was exposed to. Now, I know you didn't, you mentioned like, um, being able to participate outside the constraints of, uh, surfing and you didn't compete, right? I think yeah. you tried to compete or, and you didn't like it or something like that. Well, um, I, we played with it when we were kids. Competition when we were younger was, was fun. And then it became, and then when we, when we got egos, uh, bigger egos and money was on the line and all that stuff, then I think it, it, it definitely changed the whole experience and it, it stopped being, um, fun and it felt, it felt, you know, and, and then you, and then, and then you, you, I felt like that you were, that, that you're, you were at the mercy of judgment. And the yeah. thing about surfing is we have judges. And so, and sometimes they're, that judgment can, can be confusing. And so within the, within being confused by judgment, like you can watch a gymnastics event and be like, well, that seemed kind of weird. That was a weird call. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, it's bad enough with referees, never mind judges. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the perception, you know, it, you never know. It's like the yeah. wearing rose cl colored glasses, right? And and you see the world one way, and I see completely different. We can't absolutely. And, and 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 at the end, we all have a very different opinion of how we see the world, with, yeah. even with the same colored glasses. <laughs> that that might be a good question. Um, if you're ever working with somebody or come across somebody that has a very different opinion uh, than you, or maybe a time that it happened in your life. Uh, what are some tips for people just on good mental character um, to to handle situations like that? What would you recommend people doing? Well, I, I, you know, I mean, I from we know they have a saying from the mouth of babes, right? So, in the at, at the end, I think there's always something to 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 be learned, um, and and definitely something to be considered uh, when coming across somebody who has a uh, you know, a contrary opinion to yours and just using that as a reference to maybe either solidifying your opinion or, yeah. or maybe 
making you sway and be like, well, maybe there is something to be said about this other, this other opinion. Um, I, I have a, you know, I have a, uh, a tendency to go towards math. Um, and so when things make sense, they make sense. And when they don't, they usually don't. So it, it's kind of an equation um, and use that as a governing thing. So, um, you know, if, if your opinion isn't really making sense when it comes to, you know, an equation, uh, then you might reconsider someone else who's is making sense. But, you know, I, I think that's our biggest, I think part of it is not have, you know, that it's difficult when, when our egos are so dominating our, our attitudes and our decisions um, to not, you know, to be defensive when somebody else has an, uh, an opinion. But yeah, I think that, you know, a lot of it comes with time and age. I mean, if you ask, if we had the same conversation when I was 20, it might be a different, and there might be a different, uh, different attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Um, <clears throat> now I know like throughout your career, you've had some very incredible defining moments that have made you who you are. And I know uh, what I know of you, Chopu, was definitely one. Um, and then I'm sure marriage and and having children as well. What are some of the other, uh, actually, what's one defining moment that you think that a lot of people don't know uh, about you? Well, I, I mean, I, I would think, uh, I mean, I've had, a, I've had a, a fair amount. I mean, I don't think they wouldn't know about it, but I've had some death near death experiences okay. um, that those have been um, highly impactful. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, uh, you know, I, I would think those probably have a, have an enormous, have had an, an enormous um, impact on, on, uh, on me um, just because of the, you know, the, the, the humility injury, I think injuries, I have some injuries that have really have had a huge impact because you have time to think, but mm -hmm. failure, I would say failure um, has had a greater uh, impact than success. Uh, if yeah. I, if you said what, you know, what has had the Im biggest impact um, I've had probably, I would say more for fa more failures and successes. And maybe that's why the successes had the impact that they had is because I've had the, enough failures along the way to yeah. you really use, you know, that as a reference of success. Do you have a failure that maybe was more impactful or the most impactful? Oh, um, I, I mean, I don't know if I could define it one. I think I'm pretty good at usually not allowing failure to have too much ground and okay. don't to not hold too much equity, you know, like, okay, that was a failure. Just blow by that. And, you know, we have a saying about getting back on the horse, but you know, the mistakes that I've made and the time, the failures that I've had, I usually try to, you know, the quicker you overcome that stuff, um, the better, I think you can't indulge yourself in that, but, um, you know, it, it's, it's, I mean, I was lost at sea once so that was a pretty impactful thing. I've, I've, uh, you know, I, I've had some, uh, I had some things, I've had some things on a river. I got stuck under a waterfall one time. Um, how long I, I've you, had a few, what's that? I was going to say, how long were you lost at sea for? Um, just a day, but yeah. it was, it was long enough, it was long enough. <laughs> it was long enough to think about it. You know, as yeah. soon as you, as soon as you actually make the decision, it's kind of like fasting. When you decide to fast is you immediately get very hungry. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, you can go throughout a whole day, not eating all the time, but, yeah. but somehow when you've decided to fast that morning or, you know, by noon you're starving and you're like, well, normally I don't even care about eating until dinner, yeah. but, uh, and I think it was a little bit like that. The loss of sea thing was a little, had that impact where it was once you thought that, that you might not come back it it's, uh, it has a, a big impact, but you know, I've had stuff in my relationship. I had a, a time when I thought Gabby and I wouldn't be together. And I think that was a pretty, uh, you know, intense time. I've had a time when my, um, you know, uh, one of my children had some, a health thing. And I mean, I just, you know, these, I think there's this, all of these little, these moments that, that, you know, it, it, I think, you know, when you, when you're making a carving, 
when you make a carving. It's not just any any uh, one chunk. It's the little chinks that shape the that make the shape. You know. Absolutely, like the uh, it's pressure that creates the diamond, or high Absolutely. temperature that cooks a pie. Yeah. Yeah. So so uh, to piggyback off of that, um, you know, you've got to have a, a incredible internal drive that can keep you going through being lost at sea and having a sick child and almost getting a divorce and all this being stuck in a waterfall and near near death experiences so what's that internal drive for you like i've always known since a young man like i've just had this calling i didn't know exactly what i was going to do i knew i was going to be an entrepreneur i knew i was going to travel the world and um, i knew one day i was going to have a family and and all this and so what's that can you define that inner calling you know, I, I mean, I, 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 I think for me, you know, when I look at it, I think, you know, you've, you've just described quite a few of the things that I've envisioned in, 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 my, in my life. You know, I, I think that one of them, I think a big piece of that internal calling has been to really experience living, you know, to, to experience what living looks like when you live, like when you have seen what, a lived life looks like, or you look at lives that you envy or not envy, but you look at lives and you're like, Oh, that guy's living a life. And what does that look like? And that guy's or that person's living a life or that person's living a life. And you look at all these examples and then you kind of pull the things that, that you gravitate towards and, 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 uh, you know, and, and part of, you know, and, and in my case, I would say that there's an internal drive, uh, something that you're driven by to, to 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 search to explore to discover to 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 experience i mean it's just this this thing that that uh that's that you were born with that you're born that i felt like i was born with that 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 you can that you can definitely uh that you can definitely fuel and you can definitely boost it or you could kind of you know, you could, you could, uh, you can wear it out. You can get it, you can tire it out by just by continuing to try to, you know, use it. And, and it comes in waves. It comes in, in waves. I mean, there's, you're driven and you're not, you know, and then you're, then you have, you know, you go through experiences and you have this drive and then you achieve something that you're pursuing. And then you're kind of like, okay, but, Oh, whoops, that didn't quite fulfill me or that didn't quite bring me all of what, and then you continue again. And, um, I I think it's an evolving thing. I think that's something that is constant. That's alive. It's kind of like it has its own life. You know, I could say it was my spirit, um, Mm -hmm. would probably be the, the, the best description of it, that, that there's a spirit that's, that is me, that, that has its, that has a mission that I'm kind of trying to, you know, fulfill, (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to fulfill my spirit's mission for my spirit, but it's fulfilled by me kind of thing. Like, yeah. you know, I don't want to get too ethereal, but there's, you know, it, it's a little bit of the unexplained kind of, it's a little bit of that, of that part that's, you know, that's, that, that's not visible. How do you stay connected to that, that spirit? I guess you can call it, um, you know, say, say maybe there's a time when, that internal drive kind of dims out and you, you become a little bit complacent. Is there anything you do to stay connected to that, to reignite it? Yeah. Well, I think, I think um, in my, in my case, I, a relationship with nature is important. I think mm, that yeah. my continued, my continued connection to the earth, um, yeah. touching the earth, feeling the earth, realizing you're part of it. It's you. I always say, you know, I talk about nature. I go, um, you're it and it's you. You know, you're, you're, you're it, you're part of nature and it's part of you. Um, I think that's a big, a big, uh, piece of it. Um, you know, I look at my children and I go, uh, what, what example do I want to set for them? What do I want them to, to, how do I want them to remember me or, 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 or what, how do I want them to look at me? Like, how do I want them to, or what, what are they going to be able to use about what I do to help them do what they want to do? you know, all of that. So, I mean, I think there's a few different areas, um, to, you know, I think to want to, to remind yourself that, that you can always continue to evolve yeah. um, that you can grow, that you can learn that, that, that we re- can re spark the momentum again. If you're, 
you know, if you're at the end of a long season or you've achieved something that you, and you feel a little, and, and also to be realistic about that it's temporary, that sometimes it, that, that you can't just all be all, it can't be all peaks. There has to be valleys. And so you have to be the, remember that, Hey, when you're in the bottom of a valley and it might be a really deep one, that there's another peak and you're going to be at the top of that one again. And then you'll be back down in the next valley and to kind of be, just to be realistic and honest about that too. I think that's important because that, that'll help you get through those, those moments that maybe you're not, you know, at the, at the, at the, uh, and then your, what are your intentions? You know, what are your, yeah. what are your, what are your, what are you, what are you doing? Like, what's, what are you, what are you doing it for? Why are you doing it? What, you know, what's your, what's your, you know, what's the, what's the goal, right? What's the, what's the goal of it? And so, Right now I'm watching two red tail hawks um, do a dance and out my window. So somehow it's a good, something good's happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, that to go back to that quote that, that we were talking about at the beginning of the podcast, your biggest fear is a half hit half lived life. And you kind of touched on it just a minute ago. Is, is that still your biggest fear? Yeah. I, I think that, that, uh, I mean, it, it's, you know, not not kind of and i don't know if it's you know fulfilling your destiny or or you know or, or maximizing your opportunities or you know all of those things but those are all kind of descriptions of not necessarily uh experiencing um you know life on earth and it's easy to get in the drudgery of the daily living and the and that and i think that uh you know i i think that the experiencing being alive, like it's really feeling it and, you know, and, and, and can being connected to, to, you know, to your friends, to your family, um, to yourself, to nature, like all of that, that just brings a consciousness. And I think if you, if you go in, if you're thinking about that, you don't want to have uh, that you want to, you don't want to have an unfulfilled or an, or, or a half lived life, the sure, it'll sure make you a lot more conscious of living it. Right. If you just go in going, yeah, I've, I've lived the life and da da da. Well, then there's nowhere to go. So I think that there's a, I think it's a, it's not really a setup, but it's a little bit like, you know, I talk about goals, right. And okay. Hey, I'm, I have this, you know, I want to climb to that mountain or I want to paddle that sea or I want to achieve this thing. And I think if you have one that's elusive, Mm-hmm. If it's elusive and you're always moving towards it, but it's always moving, then you're always moving. But if you set things up to just arrive and be like, okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm you know, I've, I've lived a fulfilling whole life. Okay. Well then what? You still got 30 years or 40 years to go. What are you going to do? Right. Kind of thing. So I think it's important to, to not make it a setup for failure. So, um, and I think to be, to be, that's more honest, you know, to be, even no matter what you've done, there's more to be done. And so if you're always kind of, you know, if you're always in it, like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm want to learn. I want to evolve. I want to, I want to experience then, then I can't imagine why you wouldn't, you wouldn't, why wouldn't you not continue to experience and to evolve and to, and to achieve no matter what that looks like. And it can be, it can be real personal. It doesn't have to be publicly achievement. Like I think people misconstrue what, what evolving is and what achieving is and what accomplishing is. I go, you can do it right here inside of your own heart and be good and be all good with everything. And doesn't matter what the, you know, and I, I, and that I said earlier, you know, it's important to take away the power that we give other people, whether it's a group of judges or peers or people that we're concerned about their, you know, the, so concerned about their opinions that we don't follow our own, uh, our own intuitions, our own instincts, our own, uh, you know, heart. And we, I think that's, that's a danger because then you're, you know, you, then you've just decided to give away your sense of, of, of fulfillment or happiness or love or all of it. So you give it away and you're like, okay, I don't, I'm not in control of this. You control it. And most people, except maybe just, you know, your partner and your uh, one or two friends, maybe you don't really truly care ultimately about your, you know, you're feeling true. fulfillment or accomplishment <laughs> or happiness or any of it, you know? 
Yeah, it's true. Sad, but kind of true. Yeah, <laughs> I thought. I it's know, a good. It's it, honest. It's honest. <laughs> it is. It is. But but maybe that's a good uh, tell for people. Like, how many people in your life really do c care about your fulfillment? And if there's very few, maybe it's time to change, right? Well, that's for sure. Get more different. Yeah, work on some different people. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. But you got to start with you too. You know, like minds think alike, and like attracts like. So if you start working on your thing, you might all of a sudden find that you get a whole new you know, you get a whole new uh, environment just yeah. because of your, you changing what, what's important to you. You know, if you, if you change what's important to you, you'll probably start to gravitate towards, and those other people that are similar will gravitate towards you. And yeah. so you'll, you'll just, you'll, 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 see, it'll, it'll find you. It finds you. It finds you. Yeah. Kind of like if, it's kind of like if you, if you're in a bad mood and you want to run into somebody in a bad mood, it usually happens pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> like attracts like, right? <laughs> That's right. Um, biggest passion right now, Laird? You know, I, I mean, I, I think, I think it's, it's pretty, I mean, it's with my family. It's with, it's with, you know, it's with, uh, in, in, in my relationship, it's in my, um, my biggest attraction is, I would say try to grow as a person. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, trying to, to, I mean, I have athletic things that I'm, that I love to do that, that I'm, that I, that I'm striving for, but only when the house is good. So mm -hmm. when the house is not good, it doesn't, it won't even matter. Those things won't matter. So I, I kind of feel like that's part of something that I've, that I've come to realize too, is that it has to be all good at the house. Right. And then it can be good outside of the house. It doesn't matter what's happening outside of the house. If it's not good in the house, then what good is it? It doesn't matter if you're having all this financial success and all this athletic success and all this stuff. If you're, if you're in a miserable place uh, or, or your children aren't okay and your wife's not okay and your relationships or with friends aren't okay, then it, then it's, you know, that, that just is the overriding factor of that, that, that just kind of diminishes any any other really achievements yeah a thousand percent how do you how do you make sure or what do you do if the house isn't good uh, uh what do you do and you say you've got a lot of other stuff going on because entrepreneurs yep. experience this all yep. the time any anybody yep. really does um what are some of the first things that you do to make sure the house gets back in check so then you can continue doing all the stuff outside the house. Well, you got to make sure that you're, you're okay. Like, what is it that what's, what's wrong with you that you're not, are you not sleeping? Are you not, you know, are you not tired enough so you can sleep? Are you not stopping for a moment and looking at the sky? Are you not, you know, what are you not doing? That's, that's making, and it seems selfish, but you got to take care of the, you got to take care of you first to be able to take care of anybody. It's like, that's why they tell you put your oxygen mask on first before you put it on the kids. Right. It's like get yours on, start breathing, and then be like, okay, I can help the kids now. Um, and so I think it's, uh, you know, I mean, I think that's a that's a, you know, I think that's where it starts with you and and doing the thing, you know, doing the things that you need to make you well. And then if you're having any kind of thing going on with any any of the, you know. Any, anybody, any, whoever else it's going on with, then you just go right to that, that you go, you write, write to, you know, what it is. And I mean, you know, when it, I mean, I, I just, this parenting thing is, this thing is the, this is the tempering of your soul. So at the end of the day, it's all, everything else is child's play compared to the real child's play, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I know you're you're big into breathing now, and and I am too. And a lot of people that I hang out with, um, we like to do breathing exercises and different meditations. Uh, we were just in Bulgaria a couple months back doing ice baths in the river on the mountain, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, what is and, and one thing actually, I heard this recently is that you know breathe, breathing is like the essence of our soul because um, we could go months, we could go years without exercise, months without food, days without water, but six minutes maybe without breath, right? Yeah. Um, what are some of the, the, the tactics that you're using? I know you've worked a bit with Wim Hof, um, yeah. but some of the tactics that you're using and learning about breath and breath work uh, today. Well, I, I think bringing real conscious awareness 
to, mm -hmm. to your breathing, to, to like thought to breath, okay. connect to breath, connect to, to breathing, um, you know, throughout the day constantly. I mean, okay, implement nose breathing in your sleep and, and in most of your fitness, I, I, I implement uh, breath work in my fitness. Um, I do isolated breath work, um, but bringing consciousness, real consciousness to your breathing, uh, that's something that I, that I'm, you know, that I'm, that I spend a, you know, uh, I spend some real time and effort in doing that. Like in, and, and, and I try to, uh, I'll also incorporate it within, you know, all this, a lot of fitness stuff. I mean, I'm fortunate that kind of fitness is part of my job kind of yeah. in a way. I mean, it's actually part of all of our jobs as living organisms that we really, I think people don't value how important it is to, to, and, and, and listen, if you're working two jobs and you're stressed and you're on three ways and you're on the, you just, there's not a lot of time to do stuff. Yeah. Um, and I, and there's not a lot of energy and you only have so many energy, so much energy in a day, but, but being, bringing conscious awareness to breath and, and, and doing activities where, um, you know, where you can, uh, you know, a lot of the work that we do, um, it incorporates, it incorporates, you know, really disciplined breathing patterns in conjunction with movement. Um, and we, we know that, that good, uh, breath patterns are the form of, you know, manual meditation. It's a way to, 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 to meditate. Even if you don't have great meditation skills, we know through, you know, conscious breathing patterns, you can go right into profound meditation. And so, but, but yeah, just, just a relationship with the breath and, and, and the, and the, and constantly trying to bring consciousness back to it. I think that's going to be a lifelong challenge. I think yeah. it's something that, you know, it's the one that's the most obvious right there, but yet it's so, the most overlooked. Uh, any breathing techniques that you could share? That you're well, I have an app right now. We just came out with an app at XPT. So we have XPT has a fitness, uh, you know, we have a fitness program kind of lifestyle program that we developed and we just came out with an app which, uh, uh, I walk some people through some different ones and we have like all these different kind of unique uh, patterns, depending on what your, what your needs are. Are you trying to calm down or rev up or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, incorporate it during a workout or whatever. So we have some pretty cool stuff that, I mean, I could, you know, what I could say, I, I could tell you a pattern. Most of my patterns are pretty, pretty, uh, uh, I would say, unique but i like to just mix all the different modalities yeah. so i'll use you know i'll use a whim holotropic apnea tumo whatever i just love to to for myself personally a, a little bit like my fitness i kind of keep keep it keep it interesting um but but you know any 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 you know box breathing holotropic any intense oxygenation and see you know where you're playing with the co2 levels and extended breath holds and then you know the we have a guy that we work with pat patrick McEwen, who um, has that book called the oxygen advantage okay. and so he does a lot of stuff around light breathing and and working on trying to breathe as little as you possibly can mm -hmm. as a as a real challenge um because it it, it, it actually increases your CO2 tolerance and it allows your body to become more CO2 tolerant in general, which is what we all lack oh, because of okay. some, some from extensive mouth breathing. Yeah. So we're constantly scrubbing our CO2 and, and which is the thing that allows us to actually absorb oxygen in our bloodstream. We need these high levels of CO2, but our tolerances are very low. Okay. Very interesting. Not to check you. Uh, sorry. What was his name again? Uh, Patrick McEwen. McEwen, okay. Yeah, but his book is called The Oxygen Advantage. It's a it's a must read for everybody. I think that book is is he he's on our board at XPT and we work with him in, in a lot of our breast stuff. But that book is a, is a very profound book because basically just talks about the lack of nose breathing and that somehow in the last couple hundred years we stopped nose breathing and then it just gives you all of the science behind it. So. Yeah. Um, on the topic of books, what are say two or three of your your top books that you've read in your life well i, I what am i i i've have a bunch i mean, it varies all the time you know i every yeah. time we turn around we get a new one but you know i love i mean i always loved uh uh you know uh Homo sapiens and 
and and you know and and this one right now uh uh, uh supernatural the one the one uh oh uh, well i can't remember right now anyway I, there's a i'm always there's always like the book of the month or the or the you know or the book of the year or something like that but I, you know I, I i like i like science-based stuff i like stuff, mm-hmm. you know more factual um factual based uh literature just because of application becoming supernatural i think that's that's the other one becoming supernatural and and uh is that joe dispenza yeah or, yeah 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 so i've been listening to joe's book just recently uh and then uh what, what was the other one i just had another one anyway but i'm listening i'm doing i'm reading joe's book right now uh as just as another you know another one of those ones but uh sapiens was great yeah uh homo deus was another one i mean you know all these all the, the i mean we're we're in such an incredible time given the the you know the amount of information that's available and then you know all books on audio it's 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 crazy good um i had yeah. a uh the warrior's creed is a pretty intense one for for i would say for men but it's a it's a, a guy that i know that was a para um para, uh, military trooper paramedic mm-hmm. and uh that the warrior's creed's a new book that just came out but there's you know i'm always looking i just i like information you know yeah. i like i like applicable information i feel yeah. like if you don't if you don't have a, if it's not applicable it's kind of like what's the what's you know the point? Yeah. what's the point like i'm not a big I mean, my, I get when I was a kid, my mom, uh, my mom always read me a bunch of, uh, I, and I think I was fortunate it had a huge impact on me. But she read me like Lord of the Rings, all the trilogy when I was real young, mm-hmm. Boy, Jonathan Livingston Siegel, Dune. I mean, all these fantasy books, and I think that I, I can probably attribute a lot of my creativity to the imagination, you know, to that, to that part of the. Um, you know, I'm, I'm reading Ricola's book right now on uh, keto fast. Yeah. You know, that's another one. So I mean, I, I'm always, you know, I like I said, I'm always dancing around, making it, making it. Uh, you know, just trying to learn, just trying to absorb the information. I'm reading Joe Dispenzo's "You Are the Placebo" book right now. Okay. If you haven't read it, it is really great. Like probably, yeah. I, I would put it in my top ten list. And yeah. I'm not even finished with it yet. So another yeah. really, really good one. Um, you know, we, we, right now, Laird, we're interviewing a hundred major influencers, uh, from around the world to talk about, you know, how they build their influence and then handle that responsibly and then create a business out of that. Okay. And we've noticed there's like a couple different types of entrepreneurs. We have the entrepreneur that has uh, built a really successful business. And then from that, they get influence because they've done so well in their, their business. business. Right. Yeah. And then we well, have, they also have funding that. The funding, you can yeah. have influence when you have funding. <laughs> yeah, that helps out a lot too. <laughs> and then, Especially now. Yes, for sure. And then we have the, the entrepreneurs that um, kind of get their fame and then they build a business uh, off of that. Like that. And, and a lot of times they don't necessarily feel like entrepreneurs, but they feel more like artists or creators or, or mm-hmm. um, individualists or something like that. And it kind of seems like, like you're in that realm because yes. um, you've built, you, you know, you found your niche, surf, big wave surfing. You built it up to become one of the best in the world, surfing the biggest waves. And then off of that have created businesses and opportunities for yourself. Yeah. Do you, yeah. do you see yourself as an entrepreneur? I, not, I don't, I feel myself more as an innovator, okay, being, yeah. being more innovative. Uh, but I have an entrepreneurial mindset just because I, I, I was, I've been exposed to business and growing businesses kind of throughout my career, career, either, either, help you know either being sponsored by them sponsored by businesses or you know having that kind of relationship as all you know as being used to help promote other people's businesses Mm -hmm. so that's kind of gives you some insight into business yeah um, i would say and uh you know and and but i but i yeah i i don't i mean i would i've spent a, a a lifetime kind of building a brand right that that actually other companies have helped me build yeah. directly because they've they've used me to promote their company but that's promoted me at the end of the day and i feel like part of that evolution is to be able to you know at the end be your own sponsor ultimately yeah. and 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 take the brand that you built and 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 use it 
uh, will again, not living a half life, try to maximize the opportunity. So you spend all this time risking your life and building a brand and then to not do something with it would seem like kind of a waste. So it, right. it seems like a natural evolution to auto, kind of find products or find businesses that are kind of, you know, that, that, that reflect that brand. And so I, I know myself personally that, that, um, I've been, uh, somewhat selective as best I could given you have to eat and survive, but I've been pretty picky when it comes to, you know, who, who I would be willing, what I would be willing to promote. And, yeah. um, even when I maybe wasn't in a position to do that, um, just because I feel like it's a responsibility and, uh, and that you have a responsibility if this is how you make your living and you have people, you know, admiring or looking up to things that you do. And then you're an example and then you go, yeah, you know, it's okay. Eat poison or drink poison or, right. you know, or, or what, you know, so I, I feel like there's a, you know, there's a combination of factors that have led me, you know, got me to this point, but I, but I, I definitely have had, uh, I would say there was a conscious effort to build a brand because I, I learned kind of, uh, early along that that was the one intangible thing that, that, that you couldn't just buy. Yeah. You can't just right. take money and make, and make, you can make a brand, but you can't give the brand true values authentically and have a history and have all of this stuff that, that takes ultimately a life to, 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 build. to, to build. And so um, it, there has been an aspect to that, that I've been conscious of um, throughout, throughout this process. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and the businesses you guys have now, I know the coffee business and then uh, foil surfing is, is something you're big into. And yeah, well, I, have, I have hard goods. I have apparel. Um, we have a couple other products, that, some innovation stuff that we've gone into. Um, okay. The superfood, obviously the superfood and, and XPT, so Laird Superfood it, it, and, and then XPT. Those are the two businesses that really, I mean, the hard goods is part of it is I, I need it. I use it. I, I kind of so I like to try to build things to have some sort of participation in things that I actually need. Like yeah. I need apparel for the ocean. So I do some stuff with that. I need boards. So I build some stuff, but the superfood and the, and the, and the, uh, and XPT, both, both, both Laird superfood and, and XPT are kind of real reflections of our lifestyle and, and of our brands, mm -hmm. you know, of our, of our kind of, of our values. So they're representing and, and they're, some, you know, this is real stuff. The XPT is all the things that we've done and learned and, you know, that been exposed to and Laird Superfood again is these are products that I was using that, that we turned, we made a product, we made something out of it. So, so this stuff's coming real authentically. I really, I feel like, um, that's probably one of the most important things is to make it authentic. It has to be real. If I'm out there telling you how great it is, I have to really believe that. And unless I'm a really incredible actor, Right. Um, if I don't, I'm not going to be, you're going to smell the insincerity. And so, um, and I just, I'm not good at not telling the truth. So I'd rather just make it something that I believe in that's real than, than just do something for the, the, for, you know, out of, okay, Hey, it makes financial sense, you know, or you have to do it cause you got to pay your bills. I don't want to be in that position. I want to do something. And, 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 and it's also work and you have an impact. Like if you want to have an impact, what kind of impact do you want to have? Like, and how, and what does that look like? And, and I feel like if you really want to have real impact, then, I mean, anything that I've really been involved with authentically that's come out of, out of what we do is, you know, this is stuff that's either making people, you know, use the ocean or use being in the world in a new way, in a way that's impacting their life. Or you're talking about, you know, like a, a, a lifestyle program that's changing people's lives and making them have a whole new life and a whole new, and then, or it's you're eating things that are making you feel incredible that you're, that are helping your health. So, I mean, <laughs> you have activities that are good for your health and good for you. You have, you know, uh, programs that are good for your health and good for you. And you have food or you have products that are good for your health and good for you. It seems like those are all, you know, those are all good things that, that, you know, that I can say when I die, like 
I can walk up into the pearly gates and be like, okay, I'm here. Like, I don't feel, I don't have a lot of remorse about these things. I didn't, you know, I'm trying not to mess up the planet. I'm not trying to mess up the humans. I'm not, you know, I'm like, these yeah. are, these are, these are good things. And so, uh, and, and listen, again, half live life, half, you know, you got to decide what you, there's a lot to do down yeah. here. And so what do you want to do? And what does that look like? And, 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 and what kind of, you know, what legacy do you want to leave behind you? Uh, how, how does that look? What's that look like? If you, if you're even thinking about it at all, um, what does that look like? Like when you, you know, when you leave, are you leaving, are you leaving a, you know, a trail of shrapnel? Are you leaving a, a you know, a blossoming flower garden? I mean, what are you leaving? Yeah. What do you, what do you, you know? And then what do you, and then what are you putting down right there? Right, right here, right now, you know, what right. are you putting down? And what are so, you plant, planting? Yeah. 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 What are you doing? So, so those things are, you know, and those, uh, I mean, those, the, a couple of these businesses are really have, they're, 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 they're on fire. They're, they're doing, and it, and it, and it's confirmation again, that, that, you know, that, that we're in the right route that we're doing, you know, you're doing that. I mean, listen, you, 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 you can, you can have a hundred attempts and, and, uh, what do they say? There's great honor in a failed attempt, no honor and no attempt, but yeah. you just don't know what one's going to hit. You don't know what thing's going to hit and what's going to work. And, um, you know, and, and if there ever is going to be one that hits and works and, you know, how does that look? And so a big part of it is, you know, faith and believing, you know, you got to believe you can, you can't believe you can't not believe it's going to be something special and then have it be something special. You, 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 there has to be some relationship between, you know, your, your faith and your belief. And then your, and then all the stuff that you do behind, like, what are you doing to support your faith and your belief? How are you acting? Where are you, you know, where are you living? And it doesn't mean, you know, and one thing for sure for Gabby and I, it's really important that we never ever try to paint a picture of some fairy tale because it's not fairy tale. Life's, it's a tough business out That's here great. living in. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it's it, raising kids is hard and being relationships, not easy. And, you know, trying to, trying to, walk that line and and be upright and be you know and have all those things i mean this is this is tough business living <laughs> living's a you know it is living's right? a tough business not all just perfect like oh yeah it's just all great and it's like and it's easy to look from the outside and think you know think that it that it's all a, a, a fairy tale but the fact is is it's no it's no it's no walk in the park and uh you know and and it's it's but but that being said, hey, we're so thankful and so blessed that that we both, you know, get to be together. Have had a have had careers that we pursued things that we love doing. We've been actually able to earn a living from things that that we believe in. Um, we can continue to endorse and promote things that we believe in. Um, that you know that 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 are we hope are you know lights in the world. That 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 there's some light in the world. Yeah. You touched on on kind of a, a few um, key words that want to make me ask you this. Trigger question. you, yeah. Trigger but, you, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, trigger also, yeah. Um, but like, how how would you define the spiritual side of yourself? Well, I mean, I my daughters uh, ask me, uh, you know, hey, do you believe in evolution? And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, well, do you believe in God? And I go, yeah. Like, you know, like, uh, you know, and what is that? And who is he? And what does he look like? And I'm like, okay, well, all I know is that I, my beliefs have led me in a path of trying to live a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't, I, I would rather profess with my actions and not with my words. So when it comes to what I believe spiritually, I try to live in a way that reflects what I believe spiritually and not profess in a way that, that tells you what I believe. So, and I, and I, and I, and I feel like both Gabby and I have tried to do that in our lives that we try to, we try to walk in a way and live in a way, um, that is perfect is a, is a, uh, you know, that we profess our beliefs through our actions and, and, uh, and what does that look like? And that looks like, I feel like it looks pretty similar to how we're living, like how we, how we are as people, you know, who, who, who we, what our values look like, uh, you know, all of those things. And we're still just people, you know, just, I mean, you, you, when you look at truth and you say what my spiritual belief is, 
I believe in truth, mm -hmm. whatever that looks like. And I don't care where it comes from and what it is. Truth is truth. Right. Truth doesn't change because it comes from the South or it comes from the North or it comes from the East or it comes from the West. Truth is truth. And so at the end of the day, if, if you said, what are my spiritual beliefs? I believe in the truth. And I think that the truth is, is you can't, you can't misinterpret the truth. There's no inter there's no misinterpretation of the truth. If you're misinterpreting the truth, then that's not truth. That yeah. new thing that you've created. So, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, I believe in, you know, I mean, I, I believe that, uh, there's a lot we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well put, well put. <laughs> Um, I, I, I got to ask you about Chopu and your yeah. experience on yeah. Chopu. So for the listeners, Chopu is uh, um, one of the hardest big waves off the coast of Hawaii that uh, you were the first. Well, to Tahiti. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, were the, you were the first to surf it, correct? Is that? Well, I rode. I wasn't the first to surf it. I was the first one to to do what was considered the impossible at the, at the time. So, okay. and it was, it was, it was, you know, I describe it a little bit like the seven minute, I mean, the four minute mile, like the guy that broke the four minute mile, once he broke that four minute mile, then the next year, 27 guys broke the four minute mile because it was proven to be possible. Right. And so my, my, what I did at Chopu if in 2000, August of 2000 to be exact, um, was considered at the time impossible. And I rode, um, I rode, a, I rode a wave there uh, with a technique that I developed called towing um, where we were able to tow ourselves on with a, with a, with a, you know, a jet ski or a boat or just a mechanical device into a wave that, that was considered unrideable. And even when you're towed in, it doesn't mean that you can actually make it because of the, what it takes to actually ride the wave itself. And it, still to this day, when, when people are towed in, they, they, and this is, you know, we're talking 20 years later, it's mm -hmm. still not a guarantee that you're going to make it. So right. there's, there's plenty of days that happen that no one can really even ride, even though, but, but the, the, the fact is, is that at that point I kind of w was, uh, and it was, it was a very emotional day for myself because it, it was a little bit like you had a dream your, since you were a child about this thing that you never saw. But you, but you just intuitively felt existed. You never saw it. You never, you never uh, experienced it. And then when you were 30 years old or, you know, then all of a sudden you, you know, or 34 years old, you saw it and experienced it. And, mm -hmm. and so at that point, uh, that was an emotional thing because that's, that's 35 years of believing in something that you had never seen, thinking you were going to do but not knowing how you were going to do it, uh, especially that you never, cause you'd never seen it. And then I was able to do both see it and do it. And, 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 it, and, it, and it, in the, in my, you know, in our, our little world of, of surfing, that was, uh, that was a monumental accomplishment because it was, because we were able to do the undoable at the time. Yeah. So it was, it was, and, and it was a very defined one. We had been doing some pretty, incredible things my friends and I um, in the years before but it wasn't as defined and we weren't getting taken seriously um, because it wasn't so defined we were it was more we were kind of in the shadows doing this stuff and and so it was a little bit deniable um, this particular uh, achievement was undeniable um, okay. and there was no way to for any naysayers to disclaim it it had kind of just it silenced all of the you know, all of the scrutiny that was going on, uh, up until that point. But yeah, so that was a, that was a, that was a, uh, and a very emotional day and a, and a very emotional experience. And I've, uh, and, and it, uh, you know, it, 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 it definitely helped help me with a continual continuing my drive. It was one of those things where sometimes if you're just patient enough, to wait that you don't know when it's going to come and you'll get something that you need to help you go yeah. on and to keep, and to keep pushing you. Um, and then sometimes it, you know, and it's a lot of it's about, you know, waiting and, and 
Uh, I'm not very good at that. And uh, I don't think humans are very good. We're not very patient. We want, <laughs> right. you know, we want, we want Amazon to deliver that stuff, you know, yesterday. Exactly. Why is it in here already? I just ordered it now. Um, uh, so, but, but, uh, but it's a waiting man's game, you know, that, that those, those things are a waiting man's game. And, and, uh, you know, I think maybe that's probably why I'm not very patient in the rest of my, in, in the rest <laughs> of my life, because I use it all up waiting for, so cool. you know, these, these, well, these unique days, these special, these oh, yeah. special moments. I mean, these, these waves and these storms that create these waves and they they can be once in a lifetime and there's not anything you can do about it. And, you know, all the desire in the world doesn't make, uh, you know, make a, a, a precious gem. <laughs> you yeah, know? it's true. So, um, when did you know that Chopu was that thing? Uh, was it before you got the wave or was it after you wrote it coming out of it in the tube? Um, yeah, and- I felt it after I finished. I mean, before I, well, before going into it was the, still the unknown. Uh-huh. It was, it was, I was going into the unknown when I finished it. It was, I was coming out of the unknown into oh, the yeah. known. So, uh, I think when I crossed from the unknown to the known, then I was able to be like, yeah. I could feel it. My, I could, I could feel, I could feel, uh, I could feel it in my, in, 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 in my, uh, you know, in my system. I, yeah. I, I could, I could sense the, the, you know, what the, what my body had experienced. What do you, you know, we talk about flow states a lot these days and we work a mm-hmm. lot with our clients and, and, and friends actually just getting into yeah. flow states to be more productive what you know and they say there's all these different levels like uh yep. neuroscience says alpha beta theta gamma delta Wh- where on the spectrum do you think you were at at that moment right like when you went through chopu and then afterwards regarding flow states in my opinion i i just think you're at the highest the highest level mm-hmm. that you're at the highest level i think i think there has to be a uh and 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 I you know and I could be corrected, but I, I I have a feeling that there that there is a certain aspect of death and danger that is required to put you into the the top one the right. the most the most and I don't care if you're a Hindu monk on a hill um, I just have a feeling that the way our systems are designed because we were constantly being threatened by by uh death inevitably some form of love it whatever it was um throughout history and it's the it's the thing that really puts us in the highest level of of awareness and because we have to because at a certain point you're not you know climbing yosemite with no ropes or or you know doing anything at this certain level without without disattaching completely from you and going into the most present you can be given okay yeah there's one monk that's you know trained his whole life since he was a child and he can get there but uh you know i i just i don't i don't i don't i just think that that's i think that the that the that the situation it needs to force it a little bit. I think there's a certain mm-hmm. element that then you need the pressure of the outside influence to bring you to the, and then you need, you know, and then you need all of those other things where you need all the 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 hours. It makes it unconscious. So yeah. it's not any consciousness and you need all those other little factors as well with it. Um, but I, I have a feeling that, you know, I, I know for me, personally that that's part of the pursuit of why we look to continue to ride these waves and do these things and and i think it helps when you're not as skilled at something Mm -hmm. that that but yet still skilled enough to be in the state but not skilled enough to necessarily make it easy so that Mm -hmm. you're still being challenged i think you have to kind of keep adapting it because of again i think like all the systems that we have if you eat the same thing if you do the same exercise if you everything's this the patterns are the same we our efficiency makes it that we get less and less and less and less and less from it and so i think that it has something to do with continuing to intensify it through lack of experience or something so you need to have something in there that forces the challenge so either the threat's so great that you know that you have to do something that that 
that you can't do on a regular basis all the time because it's, it would be too taxing. And the fact is, is that you couldn't because it really isn't allowed until you put yourself in that state and you wouldn't do that unless you had all of these other factors contributing. So I, I think it's, 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 it's not something that you can just go implement every single time mm -hmm. and, and, and every day. I think there's some factors that have to be implemented uh, into it, whether it's the intensity of your focus before you go in knowing what it is for you. And then you combine the situation that ha that intensifies the sensation on top of all of your experience and all that. So I think there's a lot, you know, uh, I mean, I, I talk with, um, you know, the flow, I have a conversation with, uh, what's his name? The, the flow master all the time, but, um, but we always, you know, we're looking at flow state. We're looking at working on some things to, to create, um, you know, to help people get into flow state. We know the benefits of flow state. We know the health benefits of flow state. We know the, the, you know, all the, that, that flow state is, is, is something that probably everyone was able to get into on a regular basis, given the fact that if you were life threatening and you're having to run from a giant bear, it didn't matter if you were a kid or a, a woman or a young girl or an old man or whatever, you were able to get into this state and be in a, be in a state of, of alertness and awareness and, and re and react in ways that, that you were in optimum. You were yeah. at, at that point optimum, as optimum as you could be, that you couldn't just subject yourself to that consciously, unless again you were so well trained, and that you, which I, I would think it would be very difficult to even be at that level. Yeah. What are what are some basic ways that you? So and we talked about you know the, the I guess you could say almost hyper flow, like you know going to Chopu and yeah. getting into this intense flow, but. Yeah. You know, just say you're stressed out um, from the day yeah. at, at work or the house. Yeah. Uh, any any basic ways you can uh, remove yourself or get out of that that stressed state of mind to a more peaceful uh, presence or, or light flow state or alpha state of mind? Well, I know that I know uh, any intense environment does it. I know. I mean, okay. heat and ice are great for that. Obviously, yeah, yeah, heat are. and ice do that. Just take you right out of yourself. I know water is great for it because uh, the threat of drowning is so powerful that you can, you, you can, and also the unweightedness of, of, of the water. You're holding, you know, your your breath holding something about no gravity and uh, and no air. Something about that world that that brings on a certain level of kind mm -hmm. of stillness. You get in there and you're kind of it's like being in another. You know, and I have some music that plays in the bottom of my pool that you can hear sound and you're oh, nice. and before you know it, you're just, you know, you're just away. It doesn't take long. You go down yeah. there and do a couple close eyed, you know, breath hold jumps underwater. And before you know it, you're, you come out, you're like, you know, Life it's like good. a different world. But <laughs> so I, I look for more environmental stuff. I mean, the problem with any kind of cardio, long distance stuff that can help get you out it's usually the taxation on the system is pretty intense for that. Mm -hmm. And people don't always have the time. I know that mm -hmm. breath work, breath work is, is one of the, one of the greatest that you can do. Obviously when you do, when you focus on a pattern of breathing and you get yourself in a nice rhythm and you, you know, you oxygenate your system and then let the CO2 levels rise through breath holding and stuff. That's definitely gonna, that's definitely gonna kind of recalibrate your, you know, getting into real slow in and out patterns that calm you. I mean, that those are all, I think those are all, you know, pieces of getting, helping you get into those lower stages of, of just to take you out of your fight or flight, something out of fight or flight. Yeah. Know? Yeah, absolutely. It makes sense. Um, or put you in fight or flight that distracts you enough so that you're, <laughs> you know, you're in flow. <laughs> um, any, uh, walk us through, well, just a couple questions, Laird, and we'll wrap up. Yeah. Uh, uh, walk us through your, your, any daily rituals that you have? Well, I'm, I love, I love coffee. Like I love, I when I love, and I, and I love, um, and I need to, um, uh, I always shower. I shower before I sleep and when I rise always. Okay. So I, I have a minimum of two, two showers a day, like okay. just because it's, it, 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 I mean, I'm, I got gills, so I got to keep, I got to keep those wet. Right. And, and that, and that something about those, that water on me, I know that showering is a big thing. I know that clean, like putting all the dishes away and keeping the kitchen organized is a big piece of what I do every day. I have a, like a coffee ritual. Like I always, 
Um, you know, I, I, I drink water in the morning to rehydrate my system. I'm always, uh, and I, I, I don't always, if I'm fasting, I don't have a coffee, but I'm always, ha I have kind of a, you know, a ritualistic, uh, you know, I always go out in the morning. First thing I solar gaze, um, uh, whenever I have Damn. the opportunity. So yeah, I, I love to, I, I solar gaze whenever I'm in an environment or the weather's conducive for it. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, you know, and that's, and that's kind of a way to connect with nature. So I like to create organization, like to connect with nature. I like to stimulate the system. They're probably, if I really look at them and I said, well, each one probably has a little different piece in the, in the, in the scheme of things. Right. You know, so yeah. one's a, one's a body one, one's a environmental one, one's a, uh, you know, one's a, a, a nature one, one is an environment, one's a body. I mean, it's like, but I have, a, I have, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, uh, you know, kind of ritualistic in that way. I'm pretty, that's my, that's my, uh, you know, those are my, my patterns. Is there, is there science, uh, behind solar gazing? Cause I haven't, I haven't heard. There of is, there is, there is actually. Yeah. yeah. If you dig into it, there was an Indian guy that did some studies on it. Um, there was an Indian guy that lived 465 days without eating. All he did is drink water, oh my and, God. But, he sol but he solar gazed every day. And all he had was, a. I think it's an enlarged hypothalamus, like uh -huh. the, the hormone gland in the middle of your brain, because the retinas connect directly to it. Yeah. And so he had an enlarged one from oh, all wow. this, all the solar gazing, but, but they also ho uh, hook electrodes up onto the head while people solar gaze and they get to see all the stimulation in the brain. Wow. So you so you, because you get the, uh, obviously through your eyes, you get the, uh, I want to say um, uh, infrared, Mm -hmm. the, the infrared in that early because the, the the when the when the sun first breaks the horizon the the atmosphere is so thick mm -hmm. that you cut down all all the ultraviolet right so right. i think all the uv gets completely blocked out and it's just certain uh infrared rays i believe it's one, one of those i'm not a scientist i just know that there's a light that that you can look at that totally lights your brain up which which at the end of the day it's it's lighting up the hormone regulator in your system uh -huh. so uh i just know that it has a some there's an i'm drawn to it i'm affected by it um and so i don't i i just know that you know our relationship with the sun and the importance of the sun for a lot you know no sun no life i mean at the end of the day it's true we, we're connected to the sun and they say that we're the first civilization in the history of the world that didn't worship the sun Every other civilization throughout history has always worshipped the sun. Um, so for good reason. I think there's, yeah. For good reason. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, how long do you do it for, solar gaze? Well, I start for 10 seconds a day. Uh, so you do 10 seconds until you get up to past five minutes, and then people get up to 15. Or I go, I go somewhere between three to five minutes. Once you get to five minutes or so, then you can just do four, you know, four or five minutes every time you do it. And I, I, that's usually about as long as my patience is. But – um, yeah. you know, but, but five, five, five minutes I'll do it for, you know, and again, but it has to be low horizon, right? If it's, if you have a, like, like I'm behind a mountain, so I'm already getting it when it's fairly, it's already been up a little bit. So uh -huh. I cut the time down, but they say that the, you know, the people that are real prof, you know, proficient at it do up, will, will do up to like 15 to 20 minutes. Wow. Is what I, what I read, but you know, people go, well, how can you look at the sun? I go, well, if you looked at the sun and it was, it was too bright for your eyes, you would squint. You'd close your eyes because your eyes aren't that stupid. Like you can't look at the sun at noon and burn <laughs> your eye. Like, you don't, you can't look at it when it's bad for your eye, but if you can look at it and there's a reason why I believe that we have a, an attraction to sunrise and sunsets. And yeah. why are they beautiful? True, why are man. they considered beautiful? We didn't just stare at them for no reason. We didn't just say they were beautiful for no reason. It was out of function. And then we came, we adopted the, oh, they're pretty. It's nice to look at. Let's enjoy it. Yeah. But it started originally with actually function that it was, we were meant to do that because of the value that it gave us. And, you know, they say the early morning light bef before the sunrise is when you produce the melatonin in your retinas that yeah. help you with your sleep. So it's like, you know, we're just starting to learn about how, first of all, how sophisticated nature is and how sophisticated we are. I mean, we create all this stuff that we think is sophisticated. And meanwhile, we don't even understand the basics of photosynthesis on humans and how the, even the hormones and the electrical system works. It's just, 
it's it's you know it's the human plight <laughs> but it's so exciting to learn because now we're defining yeah. you know what natives have been doing for thousands of years and for sure and we well understanding too understanding yeah. that understanding that it's not just for no reason and that there was real validity behind it's like why does why is all yoga all nose breathing well because you're supposed to breathe through your nose yeah. <laughs> you know it's like why did i mean we have all these you know why do we put salt and pepper and and butter on food well because that actually helped to absorb the nutrients like yeah. it's like you know it's like we don't we don't do these things these these rituals these time-tested rituals that we do aren't for no reason they're for a reason there's a reason why we've been doing this stuff and then we discover it and then we go oh okay well that's good to do it but you should know that if they're there and they exist unless it's you know drink tequila you know <laughs> and i mean these other things that are like seem like they're good for you and that there probably some real. There's probably some real, you know, science behind the actual function that they 100%. have. Do you do you have a favorite family or friend ritual that you guys do on a like a yearly basis? Yabby's pretty good about bringing. We have dinners. You know, we don't have a. Mm -hmm. We don't have a. We don't do two because both her and I, my family. I don't have a. We don't have a lot of family left. Um, and we have. Uh, we do. We have more like we like to have in the summertime. It seems like we have a lot of gatherings yeah. at our house, and we do a lot of a lot of uh, uh, a lot of gatherings. Today actually is a is a a, a day of passing of my friend. Um, it's the anniversary of my a friend of mine's passing. Sorry and to hear that. So, oh yeah, no, he's he's out there. Yeah. He, okay. He's, yeah, yeah. he's out there. He's good. He's he's good. He's the wild man. But he um, but we do we do we do we do some. You know, and, and in the summertime, we have a, a well, I have a training. Well, we, I mean, the house is like a training facility, but we have, we have a group of people that come over six days a week and train with us. So we have a lot of nice, and is that what you're talking about? Like we yeah. have some pretty intense interaction like that. So we're, we're living it back mm -hmm. to what I said. We don't just go, okay, well, you know, here, let me buy you something because I feel guilty because I haven't seen you. <laughs> we're, we, <laughs> we're not doing that. We're doing like, Hey, we're together all the time. And, you know, we're, 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 we're living, we're trying to live it. That's all we're trying to live it. It's the best we, the best we know how given, you know, our constraints. Well, like even the neuroscience of, of breaking bread together, you know, and is releasing mm. oxytocin and serotonin into our bodies. That makes us feel so good. And it makes sense. You know, we used to have all these big dinners uh, in all cultures around the world. And it, for it, sure. It's really gatherings, cool. gatherings, gatherings oh yeah well we have so i have it in the daytime and then we have it at night too we put gabby's rule amazing about drawing the friends for the for breaking bread and then we have you know and then we and then we're and then we have a like like i said we have a bunch of we have a core group of about six men and, uh, and a couple ladies that show up to train every you know like six days a week and then oh, cool. maybe we'll do a lunch sometimes we do a lunch with a couple of the guys after and stuff like that but that's we're pretty that's a pretty we live that we we live yeah. that we're living the bread breaking. We're, we're breaking that bread every day. <laughs> what are what are the types of men in particular uh, that you surround yourself with? What are the traits in those men that impress you and make you want to be around them? Well, I, I mean, I think it has to do with their values. I think I think the the that uh, I mean, first of all, we know to be heroic, you need to be compassionate. Yeah. So we need compassion. We need, we, 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 I really respect compassion, uh, as a, as a trait, as a value. Um, I mean, I, I think that there is obviously, you know, the 10 commandments. I mean, you know, we want men with values of that, 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 you know, truth, like truth is good. That's a, that's an <laughs> important one, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. at the top, yeah. uh, uh, gener generous, generous is important. Being generous is very, very important of your time, of your, of whatever, but just being, being generous. Um, and, uh, um, so those, so the men that, and disciplined, I think there's a last aspect of discipline that the ability to be very, you know, consistent and, and, you know, and, and hardworking, I think hardworking and, you know, that, that, uh, that is another trait that I admire, uh, you know, and I think that, that uh that most of the men that that we, what happens is we end up to just they get repelled by us you know when they if the wrong kind of guys come that, that they just get repelled because yeah. it's, we we always say we leave the we, we leave the egos at the door yeah you don't bring your ego 
we, no one here has it. We're not, it's not about your ego. So we're not, we're not doing any ego, ego thing. And, and some people have to hold that, hold it down more than others, but, but we pretty much, everybody just comes and, you know, and, uh, but work hard, work hard, be generous. I mean, you know, this is be kind, you know, uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's our, that's our, that's our kind of our values. That's our, our, you know, what we're looking for. One more question, Laird. Uh, who, who would Laird Hamilton be without water? <laughs> you know, he wouldn't be much. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, without water, none of us would be much. I tell you, we're, yeah, we're, true. It's, it's an intricate <laughs> part of the, of the, of the equation, but you know, I, I think that, I, I know that I would, I do, I really like to learn and I really like innovation and inventing. So somewhere in, in inventing and science and stuff, I think I get a lot of fulfillment off of, of, of creation, of, of having an idea and being creative. So I think that that's a piece that the, whether I had water or not, I would be a part of who I am. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't know if I would be incarcerated or not. Uh, <laughs> But, but the fact is, is that, um, you know, I mean, the ocean has definitely shaped, shaped me. Uh, and, and I, and I attribute a lot of, uh, of, of my, of the better traits that I have when I have them to, uh, to the ocean, um, as well. But yeah, I, you know, I, I think I would be pretty dry. I think Larry yeah. Hamilton would be pretty dry without water. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty Fair dehydrated. Enough. Let's just say yeah, that. Definitely not good. Uh, Laird, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for sharing all your methods and wisdom yeah. and tips with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank well, you. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. If the listeners want to reach out and learn more about what you guys have going on, uh, best place they could do that at? Well, XPT Life. Okay. Uh, XPT Life. Dot com. com is yeah. XPT Life. Dot com is is the is our health and fitness stuff. So it's, it's, that's where the breathing app is. And there's some, a bunch of cool training. We have some, kind of some pretty interesting programs and then, and then Laird superfood.com is, I mean, if you want to try any of the products, crazy good, you can go to Amazon, but that's okay. the, the, the creamers and the hydration products. And we have a bunch of new product coming out right now. We just launched a vanilla, uh, that's actually real vanilla, not, not, I wouldn't even tell you where they get artificial <laughs> vanilla from. Okay. Um, and, and, uh, and then, and then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on, I think I have Instagram and, you know, yeah. Facebook and who knows what else I, you know, it's, but Laird Hamilton, LairdHamilton.com and all that, that stuff. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm not, a. I, I'm trying to, I just try to be busy and try to keep doing and not talking about doing. It seems yeah. like the, the world has gotten into what they're doing is talk about talking about what they're doing. I'm still just trying to keep doing, but I'm an old, I'm from the old generation. You know, we didn't even have phones when I first, sure. you know, when I was a kid. So I'm like, what's this thing for? What do we do? Who do we talk about? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Laird, uh, thanks so much for coming on the show. We'll wrap up there. Listeners, thank yeah. you for tuning in once again, and we'll see you all on the next episode. Goodbye, everybody. Aloha.